What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the all new Kados Edge single board computer. Now I know some people pronounce it a little differently, but I've always said Kados, so that's what I'm sticking with. So the board I have here is a later prototype. It's really close to being the finished product. They just launched an Indiegogo campaign and they have a few different boards. So first up, they have the Edge, the one I have in my possession, the Edge V and the Edge 1S. Now that board's gonna run the Rockchip RK3399. Pro, which should be more powerful than the regular old RK3399, but I've yet to see any benchmarks on it, and I can't wait to get my hands on one to see how it performs. But the one I'm going to be taking a look at today is the Edge. Now, this runs a rock chip RK3399. There's a few different configurations. I happen to have the one that has 4 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage on board. So the Edge, in its basic form, is the same size as a Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B+. But with some add-ons, it gets a bit larger. What I have here is the Kados Captain. The edge will slide right in here. You're just gonna screw it down and it adds a bunch of IO. Like a micro SD card slot, ethernet, GPIO, extra power in, physical buttons, IR port, and it even has a gesture sensor built in. And flipping it over reveals an M.2 M key so we can put an SSD in here. We even have battery input. They actually did send me a battery for this thing and I haven't tested it just yet. The Edge will work without the Captain. It has onboard Wi-Fi, two USBs, two USB type C's, HDMI out. So you don't need the Captain to get up and running. It just adds extra connectivity to the edge. I also have a few extras here. I have the Wi-Fi antennas, the heat sink, a battery, the Kados remote, and a case. Unfortunately, I did not receive the fan that goes along with the heat sink, so I had to make something up. And I'll show you that at the end before we get into some testing. But first up, I wanna go over the specs. All right, so these are the specs without the captain installed. For the CPU, we have the Rock Chip RK3399. This is a six core ARM CPU, two cores at 1.8, four cores at 1.4. As for RAM, there's two different configurations, two gigabytes or four gigabytes. It's all DDR4. I happen to have the four gigabyte model here. The GPU is a Mali T864, four core. It's a decent GPU and it will handle 4K 60 FPS video as long as it's the correct format and the operating system supports it. Storage, built-in eMMC, three different configurations, 16, 32, or 128. This does come pre-installed with 802.11 ABGN and AC Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth 4.1 or Bluetooth 5.0. It depends on the model you're buying. HDMI 2.0A, one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0 port, two USB Type-C ports, and operating systems. There's a couple to choose from right now as of making this video. We have Android 8.1 and Ubuntu 18.04, but they will have more to offer down the road. And this is all powered by one of the USB type C's on the front, five volts, three amps. So in this video, I'm gonna be testing out Android. I did install their Linux build, but I ran into a lot of issues with it. I know it's really early in development, but the RK3399 has been out for a little while and I'm no stranger to it. So I've got seven single board computers with the same exact CPU. I also own an Android box. I forgot to throw it in this picture but I have messed around with the RK33 just a little bit. And since they didn't send me the fan for the heatsink, I went ahead and added my own fan and heatsink to the board because these chips get really hot. And in previous tests on other boards, adding a heatsink and fan has increased performance in some benchmarks by 100%. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into Android. All right, so here we are. This is Android 8.1. It runs really smooth on the edge. Only issue here, no Google Play services, so you cannot get to the App Store. Tried everything to get it installed, but I guess Google set up some new protocol where you have to have a certified device to access Google Play. In the past, I've been able to install Play on pretty much anything, from Android 4.0 up to Android 7. 8 has given me nothing but trouble. So I installed a third-party market and I sideloaded some apps. Now this could be fixed in the final version or Kados could get certified by Google, but right now it is not working. First up, I had to run some benchmarks. This is Geekbench 4, single core. At the very top, we have the Kados Edge with the Captain. Then we have the NanoPi M4. I recently did a video on that. It is an RK3399 device as well. Asus Tinkerboard. And finally, the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Because if you want to run Android, this is the device I always recommend. As you can see, the M4 did come ahead of the Edge by just a little bit, not much there. But when we move on to multi-core, it's a different story. 
I was really surprised when the M4 beat out the Edge by this much in the multi-core Geekbench. So I actually thought something was going on with the Edge. What I did was take the heatsink off, took the fan away from it, ran it again. Lower score than this, then I just put the heatsink on with no fan. I tested this about 8 different times and this is the best score that I could get out of the Edge with Geekbench 4 multi-core. And this was the best score with the heatsink and fan on the Edge. Moving on to some graphics test, I couldn't test the Tinkerboard on here, unfortunately it kept crashing with GFX Bench, but this is T-Rex on screen. The Edge did come ahead of the M4 by a little bit, but this is where the shield dominates everything. And finally, 3D Mark Slingshot. This is just the OpenGL test. The RK3399 does not support Vulcan. So the Edge did come ahead of the NanoPi M4. And when we're working with such low scores already, this is actually a big jump over the M4. I'm surprised it scored this high seeing how the multi-core was so low on it. But we're using mostly GPU here to run this Slingshot benchmark, and the Edge actually did a decent job here. I wanted to test some native 4K video playback from a USB 3.0 drive. I ran the same test on the NanoPi M4. But I did run into some issues with Kodi. That's what I usually use to test this. I tried both of the builds of Kodi from the website. They both crashed on me. I tried the Rockchip Media Player. Really couldn't get the latest update for it and performance was not great. I also downloaded SPMC. Same thing. Performance was horrible. So I just ended up using the built-in video player that came with this firmware. First up, we're going to go with Big Buck Bunny. Now this is 4K 30fps. It's an MP4 file. I got a good feeling it's going to handle the 30fps version fine, but when we move up to 60, that's when these boards start to struggle. So I've actually run this on so many devices, just from this start scene here I can tell you it's going to run it fine. Shouldn't have any trouble playing native 4K 24fps or 30fps movies here. Let's move on to the 60fps version. This is the same exact thing, but at 60fps. Very high bitrate. So one thing that usually happens with this file here is the sound desyncs if the board just can't handle it. And I can already tell you, it's not going to handle it. We're not running at 60 FPS. So yeah, there's no point in going any further with this one. I'm going to move on to something a little less heavy duty. Let's go with Jellyfish. This is 55 megabits per second, H264 MKV. Shouldn't have any trouble playing this. Nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and up the bitrate and the resolution. I got two to test here. I'll go with the 120 megabits 4K H.264 MKV first, then we'll move on to the HEVC 10-bit. Looks great. We'll move on to the 10-bit. Notice a little stutter in starting off. Not too bad. I think it should catch up. Pretty solid performance. I don't think we could go up with a bitrate much more. It will start lagging out eventually, so I think it's time to move on to some native Android gameplay. First up, we got some PUBG. I'm on all low settings. 
Now I'm using a mouse and a keyboard here. I did install a controller mapper, but I got banned as soon as I joined the game. So I had to restart here. The keyboard works, but it's a little wonky messing around with the mouse, trying to use it for the touch screen here because you gotta go all over the place to touch all these buttons. I can't believe he hasn't taken me out yet. These controls are so all over the place. And I got him. That's ridiculous. So yeah, I mean, you can play PUBG on something like this. It's just not a great experience. It is really laggy, even on the lowest of settings. This is San Andreas. I did turn the settings down because I know it's not gonna handle it at max settings. These Mali GPUs have always given me bugs with this game. There's a few other Rockstar games available for Android, and the RK3399 is going to handle all of them just fine. Got a smooth frame rate here. Looks pretty good. So this is one of my favorite games right now. This is FR Legends. I've been playing it on my iPhone for a little while. I set up the controller mapper Octopus so I could use my Xbox controller with it, and it actually works pretty decently. So if you do need controller input, this will work, but be warned, like I mentioned, I was banned in PUBG as soon as I signed in. I guess they knew I was using this. You can set it up for any key on your controller. So that's pretty much it, guys. You gotta remember that this is the first release for the Edge. It's only gonna get better over time, but I'm not sure by how much, because I have been messing around with these RK3399 boards for a little while now. I've seen a lot of fixes on the way, but I haven't seen a giant jump in performance, so keep that in mind. So if you're interested in learning more about this, I'm going to leave a link to the Indiegogo page in the description. You can actually pledge to buy one of these right now, or you can pledge to buy the RK3399 Pro version. I really wanted to make this video with the Linux build that's available right now for the Edge, but personally, I ran into a lot of trouble with it, so I'm going to wait until some of the bugs are worked out, and then I'll do another video. Really appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to check the links in the description, and like always, thanks for watching.